Welcome back, everybody, to another deep dive. Um, mm -hmm. Today, we're going to be looking at the story of Pra Michelle. Pra Michelle. Yeah, and uh, Pra Michelle, you probably know him as a member of the Fugees. Right. But uh, his journey has taken kind of a crazy turn. Yeah. Um, he's facing some pretty serious charges that yeah. could land him in prison for over two decades. Wow. And it all stems from accusations of campaign finance violations and illegal lobbying for China. Oh, wow. So we're going to try to break down this whole story. Okay. We're looking at an excerpt from this article. All right. Spy Games or Misstep, the Unraveling Saga of Pra Michelle. Interesting. And uh, yeah, we'll try to understand just how a Grammy-winning artist ends up in such a predicament. Yeah, this is a really wild story. And I think to really get into it, we have to kind of go back and understand the whole world of sovereign wealth funds. Okay. Um, so these are basically state-owned investment funds. Okay. And in this case, we're talking about Malaysia's 1MDB fund. Right. So from this fund, a massive $4.5 billion was basically siphoned off. Wow. And this was all orchestrated by a financier named Joe Lowe. Joe Lowe. Yeah, and this is where Pras Michel kind of comes into the picture. Okay. He got involved with Joe Lowe, who is notorious for this extravagant lifestyle. Yeah. I mean, hanging out with Hollywood A-listers, financing movies like The Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, wow. Showering Leonardo DiCaprio with crazy expensive gifts. Please. So it was this connection with Lowe that ultimately kind of dragged Michelle into this mess. So this article talks about this crazy episode called the Banana Peel Meeting. The Banana Peel Meeting. Yeah, and this took place at the Four Seasons in Manhattan. Okay. And Michelle was told to go meet this high-ranking Chinese official named Sun Lejeune. Huh. And to get to this meeting, he had to use a secret elevator Whoa. and say the phrase Banana Peel. It's like something out of a movie. I know, right? It's crazy. And the meeting itself was basically about this high-stakes negotiation. Okay. The release of American hostages. Wow. In exchange for the U.S. cooperating in extraditing a fugitive. And even Michelle himself said about this whole thing, I never wanted to be a spy, but a part of it felt like that. It sounds like he got him way over his head. Yeah, I think so. It's crazy how these things happen. Yeah, it's wild. So, you know, while the secret meetings and the Hollywood connections are definitely fascinating, mm -hmm. I think we really need to look at the legal side of this whole thing. Okay. Because the prosecutors are saying that Michelle was knowingly working as a foreign agent for China, funneling millions into U.S. political campaigns. Oh, wow. And lobbying the Trump administration on their behalf. Interesting. So this is where this thing called FARA comes into play. The FARA? Yeah, the Foreign Agents Registration Act. Okay. It's this law that basically says, if you're working for a foreign government, you have to disclose it. Gotcha. And FARA cases are super rare. Really? Which just shows how seriously they're taking these charges against Michelle. Wow. So they're really going after him. Yeah, it seems that way. Okay. It'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. For sure. Now, one thing that really stood out to me in the article is that Michelle claims he was just following the advice of his legal counsel. Oh, really? But his lawyer was also the Department of Justice official. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Yeah. I I'm kind of confused by that. Yeah. How could someone with that kind of legal background advise him to do something that seems to break IRA? Why? Like, is that something that happens often in these kinds of cases? Well, you know, it's a really good question. And I think it just shows how complicated this whole situation is. Mm -hmm. Because even though a lawyer can give you advice at the end of the day, you're responsible for your own actions. Right. And the prosecutors are basically saying that Michelle knew what he was doing, uh -huh. that he understood what IRA was, and he still chose to do things that went against it. Okay. And the fact that his lawyer also worked for the DOJ just makes it even more confusing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So the trial itself sounds like it was pretty wild. Oh, yeah. It was this crazy mix of celebrities, high finance, and international intrigue. Like Leonardo DiCaprio even testified. No way! Yeah, he talked about what it was like to interact with Jay Ho Lo. Oh, that's so interesting. And then other names came up too, like Kim Kardashian and Martin Scorsese. It's like a Hollywood movie. I know, right? <laughs> it's insane that all of this stuff is connected in this one case. It really is. So Michelle's lawyer, David Kenner, decided to try something pretty unusual. Oh, really? What's that? He used an AI-generated closing argument. An AI? Yeah, AI. Like artificial intelligence. Oh, I've never heard of that before. Me neither. It seems pretty out there. Yeah, that's super interesting. And on top of that, Michelle decided to testify in his own defense, mm. which I guess is pretty risky in a case like this. 
Yeah, usually in these kinds of situations where someone's accused of working for a foreign government, they don't testify. Right. Because it opens them up to way more scrutiny. Makes sense. So the fact that Michelle chose to testify probably means he really believes he's innocent. Uh huh. And he's willing to fight hard to prove it. This article also brings up these kind of contrasting ideas about Michelle's role in all of this. Oh, really? Yeah. Some people who support Michelle see him as kind of a scapegoat. Mm. They're saying that a lot of other major players in this whole 1MDB scandal, right. like Joe Holo himself, yeah. they haven't really faced any serious legal consequences. Right. So their argument is that the government needed to blame someone, uh -huh. and Michelle was an easy target. Okay, I see. Yeah, and you know, it does make you wonder about the whole idea of selective prosecution. Yeah, it's definitely interesting that Michelle is the one facing serious jail time. Right. While other people who were supposedly involved in this huge embezzlement scheme are still out there. Exactly. And it definitely gives some weight to what Michelle's supporters are saying. Yeah, it does. So despite the guilty verdict and the fact that he's looking at years in prison, wow. this story isn't over yet. Oh, really? Michelle is planning to appeal the verdict. Okay. And he seems really determined to clear his name. It sounds like he's not giving up. Nope. Not at all. He's been fighting this whole thing from the start. Wow. And now there's a documentary in the works about his whole journey. Oh, wow. And I even heard that Idris Elba might be adapting it into a movie. That's crazy. I know, right? It's pretty amazing that this whole thing is getting so much attention. It's like a real-life thriller. Totally. Yeah. And I think it just goes to show that truth is often stranger than fiction. You got that right. Well, that's all the time we have for our deep dive into the saga of Prom Michelle. It's been a wild ride. It really has. Yeah. From Grammy-winning musician to facing serious prison time. Yeah, who would thought? It's a story that's full of twists and turns, and it's not over yet. Nope. So we'll have to wait and see what happens next. For sure. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me.